you're back in Finland, huh? Yeah. Where do you live in Finland? In the city of called Turku, T-U-R-K-U. That used to be the capital. I mean, I, I was born and grew up in Helsinki, the capital, but I've lived here now for about 20 years. I like the vibe here. It's nice and peaceful, and I got a, a nice place in the middle of the city. It was very private. Because of the internet, it doesn't really matter where you live these days. It's good, easy to keep in touch with the rest of the world. And yeah, I, I like the vibe in this city. What's a uh, typical day look like for you? Get up maybe in 9, 10, whatever. It depends. Sometimes I get, well, this summer was crazy. We'd be touring. And uh, now with uh, after the COVID thing, uh, the whole the flights are uh, crazy. We we were just every all the flights were like leaving at seven a.m. or or five a.m. or you know. So I had to leave like it's always a couple of it's two and a half hours from Turku to Helsinki where flights usually take off. And uh, there's not many flights from Turku, so uh, it's always the extra extra two and a half hours for me. So you know, no sleep till the end of June, pretty much. I was like every every time there's a you know, really early hours and had to leave like two or four in the morning. So uh, like too late for yesterday, too early for tomorrow. When I chill, uh, relax, I decide to do nothing. I turn, you know, I don't answer the phone or not just watch TV all day and stay with my wife and my two cats and I'll be happy. But mostly I'm working uh, every day is different, which is a blessing, I guess. That's interesting with the uh, touring, because I've, I've wondered that quite a bit. And of course, I've heard somebody, Sebastian Bach, I think, said something about uh, the buses and uh, they're too expensive or everybody's, is everybody kind of touring right now? Yeah, everybody and their brothers and mothers and cousins are out there. They, and that was expected because the COVID uh, situation uh, easing off now. So, yeah. A lot of people are on tour and a lot of uh, buses are hard to get and uh, really expensive. And, and the flights, flights, uh, I think they're like we were told that, yeah, check in on the flight. We were checking early enough so so you keep your seat because they're giving away. I said, how, how is it possible? You booked the flight and uh, you've already booked it. And so they can't give it to someone else, can they? But, yeah, apparently they can. Uh, so, so many people cancel or don't show up that apparently they overbooked a lot of the flights. So it had to be like, had to make sure that you get on, on, on the flights you're going to be on. You know, so it's crazy. And so surely Sebastian knows what he's talking about. He's a fun dude. I like him. With touring throughout Europe and then the whole Brexit thing, has that complicated matters? Oh, yeah, that was just going into London. Uh, we had to just get the special stamps on our passport. And uh, yeah, it's a little, yeah, it's, it's different. Uh, it's, it's really uh, more complicated than it has to be. The first time we went, we had this bit of a hassle at first, but then there was a guy who uh, who said, are you Michael Monroe? Oh, I used to come to your shows at the Marquee, you know, in the early 80s. He says, it's great to see you, mate. And I was like, oh, wow. And then he recognized Sammy, too, of course. And uh, yeah, he used to go to the After Hours Club across the street, St. Moritz. That was amazing. And, you know, <laughs> it was cool. He was uh, very helpful then. And the uh, second time we went there, it went smoother. You know, it was uh, yeah, I think they've got it more together. Yeah, but it's uh, really a stupid, uh, unnecessary the Brexit thing. I think it was really a shame that that it came to that. Most people didn't want it anyway. What are gas prices like where you are? I don't know. I don't drive a car. Really? I heard it there. Yeah. There's some picture on the internet where like you're standing in front of a beautiful old school. Looks like Rolls Royce maybe or something. I thought maybe really? maybe that was your Might car. Be, yeah, pr probably. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't know what what picture that is but yeah no i don't i don't have a license i don't drive a car i know how to drive but i i'd rather not have a car at least somebody was not got a car because everybody's got just so, too many cars anyway uh, i got a bicycle uh, i got a couple of bicycles one is looks like it's a harley it's uh got a long seat and suspension and a back backrest and a friend of mine was in a harley davidson club he said they would take me as a member because of that bicycle <laughs> it's so cool but uh yeah i know i don't have a car but i heard the gas prices are are really high. But have you never had a license, or or is this? No, uh... I never had a license. That's incredible! Uh, what a feat! What an accomplishment! There's probably not too many. I think even Ozzy got his license at about sixty or something. I think finally. Okay. Well, I'm sixty now. <laughs> I still don't have a license. <laughs> even through uh, your younger years, never wanted to, or no. I remember when I, I, I had two older brothers, and they were when we were kids. They were always talking, "Oh, I can't wait till they, they turn eighteen and they can get a driver's license and get a car." And I said, "I don't even want to 
be 18. I was like, I want to stay a kid. I don't want a car. I was never, never really cared about. My wife knows more about cars than I do. Uh, I really don't even recognize. Somebody comes to pick me up, and I always say, "What color is your car?" Because <laughs> I don't know the brands or makes. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, be uh, whatever it is. Uh, um, you know, BMI, whatever, Mercedes. Yeah, no, well, BMW. Know, so BMW, right. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. The car, I'm not not a car kind of guy, but, uh, you know, that's just me. So anyway, so the Demolition 23 album has been released uh, on vinyl, that first time on vinyl ever, and uh, now on all the platforms, whatever they have these days. Oh, it is on vinyl. Okay. I didn't see that in yeah, the press I release. I saw it digitally and CD, so it is on vinyl? It is on vinyl, especially uh, never been out on vinyl before, and I did, we worked on uh, the artwork just done by Rich Jones, my guitarist, who's done all my past war albums and was really good at it. And I dug out some old photos, and there's a poster and everything as a blue splatter, blue vinyl, and a uh, cool package, just uh, gatefold cover, and a uh, really nice looking package. And uh, it's remastered, it sounds better than ever, it's kicking, kicking ass better than uh, before, even. So uh, it's finally out, it's been out of print since 1994, so it was about time that it came out. Uh, October 14th, right? Yeah, it was released, yeah. So now it's available for everybody and uh, recommended. It's one of my favorite albums from the past that I've done, apart from not faking it. I think the Demos 23 album, which was supposed to be my solo album originally, but then we came with the band name, and so, you know, it's a cool enough band to have a name. But that, that one, those two are some of my favorites from the past. One thing I wanted to ask about, which I covered some on the site, you had done some uh, social posts uh, about your documentary. Yeah, documentary movie. Yeah. And so you That's were just main... in New York recently, right? Yeah, the the previous week I was in New York for a few days uh, to meet up with little Steven, did an interview with little, St little Steven and then some footage with me hanging out with him. And then I went to see Ian, Ian Hunter at his, his, uh, his house in Connecticut. Had a cool chat film with him. Uh, we had Alice Cooper in, uh, in June when I opened up. We opened up for Alice for about seven shows. And uh, he, uh, in Milan at the last show, he, uh, he, uh, we filmed a clip in his, in his hotel room, you know, sitting, talking. And I, I let him talk most of us. He has such cool stories about the beginning of hard rock in Detroit with uh, him and Iggy and the Stooges and MC5 and the Alice Cooper band and Bob Seger and all these Susie Quattros and where, where hard rock was born. And, uh, and when they started with, you know, with Jimi Hendrix being the only guy who really paid attention to that band. And uh, uh, Jimi was the one who suggested that uh, Shep Gordon manages them and, and stuff. And, you know, it was really cool. But uh, over the past couple of years that we've been filming, there's a lot of there's been a lot of stuff happening too, uh, apart from our 60th birthday concert and having the uh, reuniting uh, Demolition 23 for to be the opening band for that, and then ending it up with the original lineup of Hanoi Rocks, first time together since 40 years. That was something special, and that happened. Uh, the, the, the filming of the documentary has influenced also these events. Then that will be covered in the documentary, the reunion, the recent one. Yeah, that too. Apart from the other cool stuff, other, yeah. Of yeah, course, yeah. I'm assuming the documentary covers your whole life, basically. Yeah, yeah, my whole life from the beginning. And how uh, long have you been working on that? Uh, for a little over, over two years now. I got this guy, uh, Pete Eklund, who's he's got, he's, he's directing it and he's in charge, of, uh, and him and his team are really. He's, he's got a great vision. He hasn't made it easy for me, uh, you know, on, on me to, uh, there's situations that are, you know, it's like digging into my personality a bit deeper. And it's, it's not going to be a regular rock uh, documentary. Uh, it's um, it's going to be an interesting story to anybody who's not necessarily into rock and roll or me. It'll be an interesting movie because uh, it's, it's very different from your, your stereotypical rock band story. Mm -hmm. 